Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Um, we got to talk about this situation with Michael Rubin. Um, Michael Rubin is a billionaire. And him and Meek Mill, they've been cool for years. Like, he used to run with Meek Mill, and um, they met in Philly or something like that. And he really helped Meek Mill out. Once he heard about Meek Mill's probation situation, he went out of his way to, like, really try to help him out. And when he got locked up, he reached out to a lot of his rich friends, like Jay-Z and others, to try and, you know, get Meek Mill out of his situation. Eventually, when Meek Mill got out of prison... Michael Rubin went to go pick him up in a helicopter, child. You know what I'm saying? Got him out first class. And Meek has been up under his ass, no pun intended, ever since. So Michael Rubin, he does the white parties as well. He did one this year. He did one the year before. And um, during the white party, a, a picture of him and little baby went viral with him and his friend hugging little baby from the back. Now, I don't know if Mike Rubin is gay. I'm not sure. Or, you know, bi, whatever. But the pictures were sus. I don't care. The pictures were sus. Uh, little baby was grinning from ear to ear. He was all teeth and shit. You know, it's just weird. It's like, how you go from the streets of Atlanta to getting sandwiched by two guys? Just, it, was, it was a weird picture, right? And so Michael Rubin is addressing this on The Breakfast Club. And he feels like, you know, black people spend too much time tearing down other black people. And so he made some decent points. Not cheeky meals, y'all. Like, <laughs> Not y'all called him cheek meals. Y'all are messy, honey. Little booty and cheeky meals. All right. So we're going to go ahead and uh, listen to this um, interview that he did on The Breakfast Club here. So give me just a second to pull up my other screen. This is Michael Rue. He's very bothered by the black community and y'all's treatments of people here. Let me. There we go. All right, we're going to go ahead and listen. I think social media bothers you a little bit because one thing I did notice from the white party, I didn't see any hugs. There was no hugs from the back. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't see so, so, so. Mike, I think that was pathetic. I think it was a joke. Of how do you attack little baby? Yeah, it, but, mm -hmm. by the way, you know what I hate? When watching a black person try to take a black person down, that's fucked up. Okay, let's keep it real. Okay, mm -hmm. Baby is one of the best human beings in the planet. There's not a person who will always do more for his community, who's a great human being, who works his ass off. And here's what happened with Baby. Baby did great, and then people came for him. Mm -hmm. Okay, and by the way, I told Kuz, I was with Kuz a couple nights ago, it was his blue hair. Mm -hmm. That was the thing that really screwed It was, you know, if you didn't have that you know, that blue hair, that was, what, that was what killed the whole thing. It was the picture. It was me, Baby, and Kuz. And, like, it was probably, like, one-tenth of one second mm -hmm. that someone caught the picture, and then it got out there, and... You know, but anyway, look, what sucks is that it actually did hurt Baby for a period of time. Mm -hmm. That's the fucked up thing. That's the thing that I don't like. What do you mean by hurt? Like, what did, like he was upset uh, about it? Or no, he... it's people that want to hate with success. And to me, I want everyone around me to do great. I want Nothing's going to make me happier than you guys doing great. You guys killing it in everything you do. I think you just got to, like, push aside that, right. that negativity. And by the way, talk about the bunny hops. Meek says to me at the beginning of the game, he says, what do you want to bet? I'm like, uh, what do you want to bet? Like, I'm not generally a money. Like, I don't want to ever take money from my friends or like, bet money. But if they want to... He's like, let's do push-ups. I'm like, great. 50 push-ups? Great. He's like, actually, let's do bunny hops. I said, what's a bunny hop? He said, how oh, do you so know what a bunny hop? Meek's idea. Meek's idea. Uh, no, 100%. So, so Meek's okay, so, so like, you go like this. He's teaching me what a bunny hop. I never saw it before. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I'm going like That's one of those things you learn in person. He's going yep. to be like, like, you don't know what to do. Right, right, right. He said, we do it in jail all the time. We do it in jail all the time. Right. So he, I didn't even know. Oh, what, I've never heard of a bunny hop before. Oh, okay. Man. I put it on my story. He's making fun of him. I'm like, yeah, I kicked your ass in tennis. Like, it's fun. Mm -hmm. I actually won something in sports. Like, a, almost a miracle. I should have had a, a celebration. Okay. No one says a thing then. Five years later. You know, people want to, now it's the turn, you know, who we're going to hate on this list? Let's hate mm -hmm. on me. Oh, Meek's gay because some guy made up a lie. Okay, so let's hate on him for that mm -hmm. and just try to change the narrative. And, oh, you know, white billionaire telling, you know, uh, black men to do bunny hops. Actually, he told me to do bunny hops. <laughs> it was his bet, and I'm sorry that he sucked in tennis. <laughs> okay, let's keep it real. So, like, I, that, that stuff. You should have played a black sport. He that, beat you. 
In everyone, by the way. Yes. But it probably any sport other than skiing, which is obviously a weird sport. <laughs> yeah. That's the only sport I could probably get in me. Um, but you know, like, the thing I don't like about that is it doesn't bother me for me. It bothers me that it actually, when I see the narrative of a really good friend of mine like me, and people try to, you know, again, if he was gay, which there's not one gay boy in his body, who cares, number one? Let's say, if people mm -hmm. want to be gay, it is 2024. Who the fuck cares? Mm -hmm. Okay? Number two, there's not a gay boy on his body. So, like, why do people want to lie about that? Why do people want to change the narrative of bet he made with me mm -hmm. to try to hurt him? So, one thing I've learned about black culture that I don't like is the black hate on hate. Speak on that more. I heard you say that earlier, and I wanted you to expound on that. You said yeah. you don't like to see black people tearing down other black people. Yeah, it's horrible. Like, why does someone want to bring somebody else down? Like, just try to build everybody up. Like, you know, I think it's culturally wrong. <coughs> And I, I'll probably get killed for saying this because, you know, you're, you know, I'm glad you're guy. saying it openly. If this yeah. is the conversations that are being I had, have it all the time. I want, I, yeah, I, yeah. I want to hear this. Yeah. I, so so I, I think it's wrong. I think, like, why do you not want to build everyone up around you? Why do you not want everyone around you to do great? The best way for everyone to do great is to push each other up. You don't do better by taking your competition down. You do better by pushing everyone up together. You want all the wind behind your back. So when you see other, when you see black people tearing other black people down in your mind, you'd be like, I would never do business with that person because of how they treat their own people? Well, I don't see, um, I, I, I don't really see the people I'm around tearing people down. What I see is the conversations that we have mm -hmm. about um, people tearing, you know, trying to tear them down. And I think like, you know, even if- To me, it brings that up a lot. The reality is like, they're aware that um, you know there's a lot of hate that comes with their success. Even if like someone's trying to get out, I grew up in a ruthless environment, and you know I don't, you know I'm trying to improve the people that are around me. It's like then the people that you know you grew up with, they're mad. They want they want to take you down because you don't have the same people around you. How about you want to grow and you expand? And it doesn't mean you don't want to help the people around you. I mean, Meek does so much for his community. You know, a completely different situation. But Baby does so much for his community. Mm -hmm. Like so, I just that whole thing right. really does bother me. Because I think it's wrong, and I think it's culturally hurting the outcome of the black community. I think it would be much better if everyone tried to push each other up. I think. Oh, child. Okay, so y'all heard what Michael Rubin had to say. Um, people were saying that the volume's low. I don't know. Y'all gonna have to watch on the playback because it was booming on my end, and other people could hear it just fine. So I don't know why um, it's coming through low for some people, but. You know, so let's, first of all, let's look at the sus picture that went viral. Um, this is a picture that went viral all over social media here. So y'all see that. Michael Rubin and little baby. And then here he's being sandwiched by two pieces. It's just an odd picture. Nobody, I'm not saying that little baby's gay, but the picture is odd, right? And Meek has done a lot of suspect stuff. I, you know, I'm sorry, but Meek, is this you? Let me go ahead and open this up. This is when I first started giving Meek the side eye. Let me share my other screen. Okay, who remembers this? <laughs> at the top of your lungs like a schoolgirl. Like somebody just stuck it up and said, ah! <laughs> And that bunny hop didn't help. Meek is too tall to be out here bunny hopping. That man is about 6'3". I'm going to need Meek to simmer all the way the fuck down. <laughs> Him screaming and bunny hopping are not helping the rumors. And then the fact that he's always, you know, around Diddy and Diddy's, you know, hey, daddy, I like how you look in that poo, daddy. It's just weird. So so the public is going to talk. But, you know, Michael Rubin is definitely entitled to his opinion. He feels like, oh, the black community be trying to bring each other down. I don't even think it's that. I think every community does it, right? Like, I, I don't like how people act like 
backbiting or certain attributes are only attributed to the black community. Every community backbites, talks shit, you know what I'm saying? It's just that a lot of us, a lot of our stuff is on social media, so you can see it. You're not really going to see people from the Jewish community blasting each other on social media, but that doesn't mean that they're not beefing behind the scenes. That doesn't mean that they're not talking shit about each other, trying to take each other down behind the scenes. Just like in the Asian community, they might not be online beefing and going back and forth, but they have a lot of back and forth in their own community as well. It's just that with black folks, we just put this shit out on front street and don't care. That's the main difference. But, you know, going back and forth, that's just, or, or feeling away or talking about somebody bad, that's not just a black thing. That's human nature. So I didn't agree with that. Like, I get what he's trying to say, but don't act like, you know, all people do is just tear down Meek Mill and tear down Little Baby because they happen to be your friends. A lot of people have given them props as well. But again, when people mess up, people have the right to be held accountable because nobody's just going to sit there and give you praise 24-7. Uh, Meek has done some good things as far as jail reform and, you know, speaking at, you know, different, I don't know, speaking on different venues when it comes to, like, prison reform and stuff like that. Cool. But he's also done a lot of fuck shit. Who remembers when he was trying to beat up Safari at the BET Awards? You know, so Meek has done a lot of little, you know, stuff to get himself into these situations as well. You know, so, and just like with Little Baby. You know, it's not like he's rapping about sunshine and roses. He's rapping about selling drugs. You know, he's had some uplifting music, but a lot of his stuff is low vibrational. So let's not act like, you know, these people are just beyond reproach. He can't ever be faithful to Jada Waiter. People are going to have their opinions on these people. They're celebrities. They're public figures. It is what it is. So a lot of black folks were not feeling what Michael Rubin has to say. And I'm, I'm not going to say that I disagree with it because I feel like he is entitled to his opinion. I just didn't like how he tried to make it seem like it was a black community issue and it's only black people. Because I'm sure he gets a lot of people who talk shit about him in his own community, being that he's rich and he's successful. You know, the, the higher you climb, you're going to have haters. You're going to have people who feel away. You're going to have people who backbite and talk shit. That's just part of the territory. If me can't handle it like he can handle Diddy, I don't know what to tell him. You can handle Diddy, you better be able to handle the backlash. <laughs> but yeah, that picture to me is just sus. It, it's just, it is what it is. It's a weird picture. But um, he did reply back. He got a lot of hate for his comments on The Breakfast Club. So I want to go ahead and share this with you guys. This was his response. Because um, I think Schoolboy Q and a few other people like kind of came out of nowhere trying to check him. So he says this. I got a phone call from one of the people that I have the most respect for in the world, and they told me while they appreciate my intentions, it's not my place to speak to speak on black culture. I get it, and I really appreciate the input. My intention was to say how important it is that we need to uplift each other, stop the hate on each other, push each other to win, and always root for each other's success. My bad, much love, and I appreciate the feedback. <coughs> So that is what he had to say about the situation. I can respect, you know, his apology, whatever, I guess. I don't, maybe Jay-Z reached out to him and told him to stand down. But, you know, again, um, not y'all looking for the Jay-Z picture. Y'all want to see him again? They said he about to open up the uh, 4040 Club. I said, is the money acting funny all of a sudden? Because why is he trying to bring it back to the early 2000s? And if you know about the 4040 Club, he wasn't paying his staff. He was doing a lot of shady shit. So he might want to just let the 4040 Club die where he left it. He was he, cause even Michael Jackson, I heard, had to like low key threaten to sue. Cause Jay Z thought he could just play everybody music in the 4040 Club and he didn't have to pay no licensing. Am I spilling too much tea? Y'all remember that shit? Look at the baby talking about what's the 4040 Club? Yeah, it just came out today. Hold on, let me pull it up. They said he wants to open up the 4040 Club, and I'm thinking to myself, is the money funny? Because why are you trying to open up this club that caused you so much headache in the early 99s and 2000s? Right here. Jay-Z planning on op to reopen the 4040 Club from U.S. Magazine. <clears throat> Jay-Z's le legendary 4040 Club is readying itself for a rebirth as the club prepares for a pop-up re-imaging at Fantastic Fest in New York this weekend. Jay-Z and his team had their sights on opening the doors to a full-time location next year. I won't be going. 
If y'all remember the drama that went around the 4040 Club, Jay-Z wasn't paying bouncers, he wasn't paying servers, and then he'd be playing people's music. And he wasn't paying for licensing. Because I remember MJ, if I'm not mistaken, MJ wanted to sue or try to sue. Let me see if I can pull this up. Y'all know I be I don't be forgetting shit. 4040 Club. I was gonna do a deep dive on the 4040 Club a while back. Yeah, he had a lot of lawsuits. This was from like 2007. Half y'all weren't even born, child. Okay, Michael Jackson, R. Kelly, Kanye West, BMI. Yep, here, here goes. I, ooh, I don't be forgetting. I be, why do I have memories in my brain that just, y'all bring up stuff and it just unlocks? Okay, here it is. I knew I wasn't going crazy. Hold on, this is it right here. Okay, lawsuit against the 4040 Club in 2007. BT.com. Have today reported that Broadcast Music Inc. BMI filed a lawsuit against Jay Z's 4040 Club on behalf of Michael, R. Kelly, and Kanye West music publishers. According to reports, the lawsuit was filed on Monday in Manhattan with BMI seeking damages for infringement on copyrights from the club and its owner, and Jay Z was named in that suit. In March of 2006, BMI made two random visits to the club, and at least seven unlicensed songs were heard, which include Michael Jackson's Billie Jean. Don't stop till you get enough. Who remembers that? Am I the only person who remembers? Somebody said they were six in 2006. <laughs> this was years ago. I don't forget nothing. Thank you, Elizabeth. She said, T, don't forget nothing. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a club in NYC. And so this is the same man. Remember that song he had back in the day? Girls, 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 girls. He had remixed the Biz Markie song, and he was talking about how the Chinese, he had to stop fucking with the Chinese shit because she kept bootlegging his shit. And so people were shocked because it's like, how are you crying about bootlegging and, you know, copyright? Because this was around the time, like, you know, LimeWire, Kazaa, Bear Share, all of this stuff was really popular. So you had a lot of these rappers and entertainers crying about, you know, poor folks downloading their music Meanwhile, Jay-Z's playing all of these artists' music at the 4040 Club, but he's not paying for licensing. So I guess he's trying to bring it back. But if you look into, like, the history of the 4040 Club, it was nothing but lawsuits and tears. <laughs> he may want to leave that bitch back in 2007. <laughs> Open up a new club with a new name, okay? But um, he's trying to play on nostalgia. That's what that is. But yeah, it was a lot of people uh, coming after him. It was a lot of shady stuff, people not being paid. It was like one lawsuit after another. Yeah, I used to love me some LimeWire. Child, we still got all our um, CDs and stuff and MP3s pressed. You always want to keep your hard stuff in case, you know what I'm saying, you're not able to access Apple and, you know, all these streaming platforms. At least you should still have your book of CDs and your hard drives with all your MP3s and MP4s. But yeah, so that that's the T on Jay-Z in the 4040 Club. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us in tune in for the T. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T TV show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T TV show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.